listen. So I got two more horrors that I caught this past week. One came highly recommended. The other ended up being the number one movie at the box office that you can catch at home. Let me explain. So obviously during these times, the box office has been minimized to the one box. We covered Swallow and how that topped the charts considering there was one movie theater open in all of America that was reporting that week. And for early May, IFC was looking like Disney and Universal combined. Minus a couple zeros. We covered Kelly Gang and Clifton Hill in our TIFF 2019 video. We were also able to catch The Other Lamb on VOD, which I think was the perfect place to catch it. Had some dope shots with a bad final shot. But The Wretched can flex that it topped the charts during a shutdown. Originally, this movie was called The Hag, and it comes from the Pierce Brothers. I think for fans of movies like uh, Summer of 84, which I don't think ever completed their sequel, it'll be right up your alley. For me, it was a decent stream it from two bros who still have their mom on the set. Her mom did craft service on this movie. Wow. Yeah. And she did it on our first one. movie. Yeah. But the best part, like, craft the table is like where everybody talks trash about the directors. <laughs> <laughs> um, but if you stick your mom at Crafty, nobody can talk trash about the directors. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I respect that. Now, full spoilers. So the movie begins 35 years ago, where we see a witch kill a family in their home, which you know, it was 35 years, we can set up the 80s. Uh, they never really come back to play with this. Instead, we jump to the present five days ago and follow Ben and his neighbors simultaneously. I think it's an interesting juxtaposition between a kid struggling with his family that's being torn apart by divorce who then has to face a witch that's literally tearing them apart by force. He works on the docks with his father, who he's mad at because he has a side piece, but his dad's like, boy, you jumped out of the neighbor's window for Vicodin, so... He probably should have snatched some Pepto instead. Mallory works with him on the docks and starts inviting him to parties, but Gage the bully is not okay with this, so they prank him into skinny dipping, so he dumps fish on their boat. Meanwhile, the witch is over here taking over Ben's neighbor and starts controlling the entire family. Mom's being weird. You should have seen her at Burning Man. Mom's always been weird. While I really like the witch in this one, she is one of those witches who's more powerful than the than the movie can control, so you kind of have to like ignore aspects of it. Like one of the big things about her, and especially when it comes to the big twist of the movie, which I think is really good, is that she can make you forget things. And yet Ben hops on Google and gets the LME on all the symbols and rituals that she's doing. I don't want our kids growing up thinking meat comes from a store wrapped in plastic. <laughs> I really like that they aim to make it all with as many practical effects as possible, and I think they do a fantastic job with it, especially with the sound editing. In the cave, there are kids that have been there so long that they've combined with the rocks. But again, instead of focusing on that, we started in the 80s because, you know, we're homaging the 80s. Again, y'all know, I'm not the biggest with homages. I don't hate them, but I don't like them being chosen over emphasizing the lore in your story. The witch is able to successfully seduce the men around her with beer. She snatched a couple of kids. She's then able to take over the future stepmom, which, you know, the kid might as well blame the invisible man with, with the situation he puts himself in, especially when the witch has got a hold of the boys in blue too. Until the screenwriters get a hold of him and, and I don't know, the kid's just free. Dad goes into the attic and finds bodies, pictures, and himself as a part of the ceremony. And that's where we get the reveal that the little brother he forgot about was missing the entire time. Now I gotta give him the credit here cause I didn't even notice that the plates were there and that someone was talking there. It's a pretty good twist, I gotta hand it to them. But it still does that thing that reminds me of another movie that, that I won't fully spoil where aliens took everyone's kid only for a mama to pull down the wallpaper and go, See, I told you I had a daughter. That's exactly what kind of happens here. The witch tosses everything in the can before it's even trash day, like... She's sloppy. By the end of it, they survive the witch, but more importantly, the divorce, as the brothers sneak in the possibility of a sequel. What you doing? Just, uh, just watching Netflix. This movie just got good. <laughs> so a couple of you said the horror movies that we were covering weren't really that scary, and, like, I... Y'all know I don't have a say in that, right? But it was enough to get this international recommendation on our radar that's supposed to be so scary, so thrilling. It involves 90 minutes of a two-year-old booby trapping herself in the house because her mom dead. Let me explain. So this is partly based on a true story that happened in New York City. I think in like 2017, a mother had committed suicide and the child was trapped in the house for two to three days alone. And... This director was like, that, that's what I want to make a movie on. For whatever reason, they also decided that the best marketing tactic for this film would be to make random calls to people with the little girl crying for help on the other line before cutting it off, having people freak out, and when they called back, they got the trailer to the movie. 
So the movie takes place after Pihu's second birthday party, so there's a lot to pop around the house. She's having more fun than a weekend at Bernie. She's clearly not a fan of Pihu's. She's microwaving more than Kodak. And for whatever reason, somehow, this iron will be on the whole movie. It really is just Home Alone, but instead, she's booby-trapping herself. Uh, but to her defense, I, I do know full-grown women who cook their tortillas like this. The fear comes in seeing the electricity bill go up, her switching everything to HDMI, pulling an MJ on the balcony until she decides to chill for a bit. In order to have enough energy for more destruction, honestly, it really is a little girl just screwing around for the entire movie with, quote, the director saying they couldn't make a two-year-old do another take because she's a two-year-old. I, I, at least he's a man of his word. Oh. Oh girl, you're just not gonna do nothing. Calls keep coming in until the dad finally is able to get through, but then she just takes her low battery and plays some talking Tom. She, she's popping sleeping pills when she could just be watching Pihu, and then it just ends. Oh. <laughs> My fingers are kind of a battle. <laughs> Listen, as a short, maybe it would've worked, right? As a baby monitor commercial? Great, but nobody wants to see a little girl cry, a phone knowingly ringing, and the same obstacles repeated three times for 90 minutes. It feels like you're watching a movie with an annoying child, but there's no movie on. Maybe HBO will one day take this and make an insane miniseries out of it, but it's crazy to think that as of now, the scariest part about your movie is the terrible prank calls you did for a trailer reaction. But no, seriously, how is this iron still on? Thank you guys for checking out this video. I'm curious to know your thoughts down below in the comments section. Uh, again, these were some pretty interesting recommendations. A lot of horror movies coming out during quarantine, which is surprising. Uh, but it's good to see one top the charts, you know. I may not love Wretched, but I think it's a, it's an interesting movie that that really pushes the, um, the, the practical effects, which I really liked. I know a lot of people keep referring to them being CG. And I, I've been seeing the production designer and the, like, the people who have worked on it, the practical effects people going like, nah, 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 nah. We worked our butts out for that. Uh, in terms of the ending, I will say Say another thing i know that it's supposed to end with like the witch now being the girl which means she can snatch as many kids as she wants you know because she's taking them out in the middle of nowhere but i still don't buy erasing all the parents memories you, there's a lot more you got it like you, you're gonna go back and change their rooms uh, i I'm still curious to see what the pierce brothers have next and next in story in fact i want them by the end of their career to make a movie just on all the stuff their mom has heard in crafty i'm curious to know your thoughts down below in the comment section let me know uh, any other recommendations you have and until next time don't forget to comment like as Subscribe, and you too can be the number one movie in America.